All right, so we've captured our footage in, we've used shortcuts to do that, we've transferred some files, we've brought some stuff in from tape, and we have organized some of our material in the browser. Uh, the first thing we want to do if we're going to start doing a, an efficient workflow to cut a rough cut is we want to understand that various shortcuts will work different ways in different windows. Each of these windows or panes, the browser, the viewer, the canvas, and the timeline, um, will use the same shortcut in different ways. So one of the key things to do in a shortcut workflow is to know how to switch between those panes with a shortcut. Command 1 will give the focus to your viewer, and you'll notice the viewer lights up on the title bar showing that it has focus. Command 2 will give you the canvas, Command 3 will give you the timeline, and Command 4 will give you the browser. And when you're in the browser, you really only need to use five keys to do most of your browser operations. Notice the browser still has focus, and if I use the up and down arrow keys, I'm using up and down right now to move through the root level of my, of my browser, and if I use the right key, I can open a bin, hit right key again, and I go down into the bin, left key takes me out, and I can surf all of my content with the up, down, left, and right arrow keys. It might seem a little esoteric to use keyboard shortcuts to navigate the browser, but if you're doing a full keyboard workflow, you're going to find that it's, it's a big distraction to take your hand off the keyboard and go for the mouse. Let's look at some of this source footage, and I'm going to drop down into this chopper uh, bin, and we're going to take a look at a clip here. Now, when I stop on a clip with my up and down arrow keys, all I have to do is hit return to open it up in the viewer. And, of course, the three greatest keyboard shortcuts of them all, J, K, and L, as far as I'm concerned, the only way to scrub footage, K stops it, J moves it backwards, L moves it forwards, and if I hit multiple taps on J or L, I can go any speed I want. It may seem awkward at first, but I think this beats any kind of a third-party input device. I think it beats using a combination of mouse and the space bar. And I assure you, when you do this a while, uh, your fingers will just automatically go to J, K, and L. I'm going to clear the existing in and out point with an option X. And in the full webinar, we're going to discuss the full range of uh, shortcuts that you can use to review and uh, mark your footage, change your markers, do uh, three-point edits, etc. But we're just going to do a very basic in and out on this. I'm going to look at this clip. I've got a helicopter coming in over the San Francisco Bay. And Again, it's so nice to be able to slew in different speeds with JK and L. And I'm not having to reach over for a mouse, not having to reach to a third-party device. Let's see what we've got here. I'm going to pick up the choppers coming in over the bridge and set an in point by hitting I. I'm going to play forward. I've seen the footage, so I can slew it pretty quickly. And I'm going to get this helicopter just as it clears this corner of the building. And I'm not going to overly sweat this because this is a rough cut. And in the full webinar, we're going to talk a lot about what to do when you're cutting a rough and what not to do when you're cutting a rough because there are fantastic tools on the timeline for actually fine-tuning these edits. This is good enough. I'm going to hit an O to set an out point. Now, most people, most professional editors are aware of F9 and F10. We will be discussing F9, 10, 11, and 12, Shift F11. But the only way to send a clip down to the timeline is to hit F10. F10 sends it down, and uh, you'll notice that the focus has shifted to the timeline, which is one of the elegant aspects of using keyboard shortcuts. In this case, however, we're not going to do anything on the timeline quite yet. We're going to go back up to the browser, again, Command-4 to go to the browser, and I'm ready to immediately start surfing my clips, and I haven't touched the mouse yet. Um, I've got another clip marked here that should match up with this one. I'm going to hit return, opens it up in the viewer. Um, an option X to delete the existing in and out point. And uh, a neat thing that uh, you can do when you bring these clips in, sometimes the clips will be way too loud. A lot of you are aware that you can hit control brackets left and right or control plus and minus to change the audio of a clip in the timeline. Well, that works in the viewer as well. And if I hit control, X in the viewer, you'll notice that I'm able to change that audio on the fly without having to go up into the into the mono or stereo tabs and futz around with that levels control. Very, very nice. Uh, control, left bracket, three decibels down. Control, right bracket, three, three decibels up. Control plus and minus is one decibel. So you've got really fine control there.